So this is going to be the last week that I'm going to do news of the week twice per week. And you know, when I first started news of the week, I usually only do news of the week once every week. And as you expect in the name of the series, news of the week is all about me doing all the news that has just happened in the previous MLS week and just kind of do a video about it. And I pick a specific date to do it, which I select Wednesday as the day to do it. And, you know, I've been doing it twice per week, mainly because there's more news in the off season. There's more big trades and big moves that teams do in the off season. But one of the biggest reason is I need to fill in that gap that I usually do previews and reviews on the weekend since there's usually no games on the off season. And actually, I shouldn't even say usually. There is no games in the off season. So I don't have to do previews and reviews. And that's where that gap on the weekends, of course, ha can happen. But I, of course, fill in that gaps with news of the week. And now since the season is about to start, which it will start in two weeks, I no longer have to fill in that gap with an extra news of the week episode. Now, heading into this Wednesday, I will not do news of the week because there is a CCL action on the midweek. And CCL, of course, is going to be starting, starting this midweek. And I'm going to push that to a Sunday because next Sunday is still not the first day of the opening season in MLS. It's going to be two weeks from now. So, yeah. But just to let you guys know, from now on, only one news of the week that I will do on my channel as I originally was planning to do with this series until probably the off season when the new season is going to be finished but without further ado let's actually get into some of the news that happened these last couple of days and there wasn't really a whole lot that happened in these last couple of days or any big news so probably it's going to be a short video although the last time i said it was going to be a short video it wasn't it was 20 plus minutes long but first of all we got vancouver once again, spending that Alfonso Davies cash, and this time they have spent it on Freddy Montero, who, if you guys don't know, he used to play for the Whitecaps. Um, he played for the Whitecaps back in 2017, and this is where some people got a little bit confused in ter terms of his deal in 2017. So, apparently in his second stint, he's going to get a permanent deal, but in his first stint with the Whitecaps, he was actually on loan with a Chinese club and that it looked like that Chinese club basically loaned him to Vancouver and a lot of people thought originally Freddie Montero joined Vancouver on a permanent deal but that of course is not the case and hence that is probably why they let him go at the end of the year now unless if there was a a option to buy it at the end of the season and if, if you're a Whitecaps fan you can probably tell me this because I don't remember that loan deal back in 2017 did he actually had a option to buy that the Whitecaps could could basically exercise then you know it's clear that they didn't exercise that that loan deal and eventually he got sold off or eventually his loan got expired and they basically let him go to Portugal and the other thing about this deal is that, you know, I think with Montero coming back to Vancouver, I'm not quite sure if he's going to be a starter with this team because, you know, they already got a striker on their team. They they signed Joaquin Art Diaz in this offseason and signed him on a young DP contract. So I'm guessing he's probably going to be the starters of this team. And I think unless if Mark Dos Santos decide that, you know, I'm going to put Montero and Ardias as the two guys that is going to be partner each other in that striker position or just play two up front. You know, I don't see how Montero is going to be a starters for this team. I mean, he hasn't had a very good good last two season with Sporting Lisbon and you know he is all going to be 31 and gonna soon turn 32 years old so as you get older as a striker your production level your goal scoring is going to go way down unless your name is Chris Wondolowski in this league or even uh, BWP in this 
league. So, yeah, I think for Montero, if it's going to be really tough for him to replicate what he did with the Whitecaps and even what he did when he was with the Sounders. A lot of people forget that Montero used to play for the Sounders, and it wasn't until Clint Dempsey, I think last year, broke the record that Montero held with the Sounders of the most goal he has ever most goal anyone has ever scored with the Seattle Sounders. But moving on into the next news, uh, Orlando City. So they are report that they are in final negotiation with Nani. And when I mean final negotiation, I mean 99% done. So this deal looks like it's going to be announced in these upcoming days and even as soon as tomorrow because today they just report that Nani is already at Orlando and he is ready to just sign the contract and basically Orlando City is going to announce that. Now, you know, this signing is definitely kind of a MLS 1.0 signing and this is going to be a signing that's going to trigger a lot of MLS naysayer that said the league is still kind of like signing retiring guys and it's still kind of like a retirement league. But one thing I will say this, to all those naysayer and I say this before but you know I feel like people don't understand the fact that yes I get the the there are still teams that are signing aging European star to come to MOS and then basically retire but people don't understand that not every team does that and the teams that usually do that are usually teams at the bottom of the table I mean you look at the last two Big signings, uh, a team done that has has basically signed from from a guy that plays in Europe and he's like a big star. Those two teams are found in the bottom of the table. I mean, when Wayne Rooney come to DC United, before he came to DC United, DC was in the bottom of the table. And then when Bossy and Schweinsteiger come to Chicago, Chicago was in the basement for majority of the last couple of seasons. So it's not like... Every team is doing that, but it's just, it feels like it's a team that is in the bottom that is doing that. And I guess the reason why they do it is because, you know, we have to kind of please our fans. I mean, nobody wants to support a team that usually are in the bottom of the table and not even making any progress to get to the playoffs. So these teams are just getting so desperate that they have to do something to please the fans and you know bringing big european names is definitely going to do that i mean if the quakes are going to sign a big name player like let's say leo messi you know obviously that is going to draw a lot of crowd but one thing i will also say is that just because these teams are signing big european names doesn't mean they always be very successful. In fact, most of these teams that sign big European name, that even though they get to the playoffs, they immediately get eliminated in the playoffs. Just look at DC last year with Wayne Rooney. Once DC gets into the playoffs, they got knocked down in the first round. It's the same thing with the Chicago Fire when Schweinsteiger, Schweinsteiger came in for the first year and Chicago just got knocked out in the opening round. So... For those people that say that MLS is a retirement league and that these teams are signing MLS uh, or not MLS European kind of kind of superstar player to basically compete to MLS, yeah, that's that's not correct. Okay, you know you you can even look at the last four ch champion in MLS and how none of the last four champion in MLS have a guy that is like a European superstar that just pretty much carries the team that's not what this league is all about now this league has moved on from that that mentality and is moving toward a mentality of a selling league and developing young south american talent um but going back to this deal well you know again it's a mls 1.0 type of deal and it's kind of something similar to the kaka situation where orlando city signed kaka and hopefully kaka can basically carry the team which he kind of did, but unfortunately, he didn't carry this team to the playoffs. So, I have a feeling it's probably going to be something similar with Nani because this Orlando City team is still such a big mess right now. Like, uh, unless if Nani can do something Kaka cannot do, which is carry this team and gets to the playoffs, yeah. I, I don't think the signing is still going to be enough to 
tell me that Orlando City is going to be competitive. Unless if some of these guys on their team, some of the big signings that they have done in the past where they, of course, get some good MLS veteran player and they started to play very well again and live up to their expectation, then maybe Orlando City could make the playoffs. But just signing Nani and say that that's going to be a move that make Orlando City to go to the playoffs, yeah, that's kind of a that's a little bit of an overstatement. Um, but meanwhile, moving on, LAFC, they are reported that they are going to add 20-year-old Lamar Batista. And apparently, I think LAFC are, want to sign this guy because they really need to improve their depth in that back line. You know, that back line, I've been saying, it's been kind of mediocre. It hasn't been very good. Well, one other problem with that back line is... There's not a lot of depth in that back line. And if one of one of the players throughout the the upcoming season for LAFC goes down and it's one of the players in the back line, then they are kinda doomed because they don't really have a guy that can just basically re replace him and be as effective as the guy that he, he is replacing to. And I think Lamar Batista, you know, I don't know much about this guy, but they said that he is a very promising player and you know he's a 20 year old he's a very young kind kind of player and yeah i think it's a good depth option for lafc when they desperately need some depth in that defensive area and it's also good news the fact that lafc finally pay attention on the defensive end they've been signing so many player on the attacking end that i feel like it's just i feel they need to to really think that you know Attacking is not always going to just get you get you all the way to MLS Cup. Sometimes you need some defensive piece. You need guys that can actually defend so that you don't concede so many goals. And that you don't just have a mentality where you're just going to outscore everybody. Like, if you have that kind of mentality, which is a mentality that, that their crosstown rival, the Galaxy, is having. Then, yeah, you're not going to go very far into the playoffs or even make the playoffs um but moving on uh the timbers they have finalized a loan deal of river plate right back jorge morea so now looks like both of their fullbacks has a first name of jorge which kind of make kind of makes sense with the, the portland timbers consider they have a couple of players with the same name i mean the two diego diego chara and diego valeri but in all seriousness Certainly, this is a good, decent deal. Although, one thing for Portland fans they have to be cautious about is that Jorge Morea, he ha has had a, a leg injury that kept him out for a very long time last season. And you don't know exactly how is he going to do. Like, he's just recovering from this nasty leg injury. You don't know if he's going to be that same player before he suffered that leg injury i mean whenever you suffer a leg injury that kept you out for majority of the season as he did um it's gonna be tough to try to come back from it but we shall see how that's gonna materialize and sticking with the timbers their new goalkeeper and i am not even gonna attempt pronouncing that i think it's uh Ivec, that's how you pronounce it but he have a leg injury and he needs to it also requires surgery so he's gonna undergo the surgery and he will be out for six to eight weeks and this was the guy that was supposed to maybe bring some more competitiveness in terms of that goalkeeper position for the portland timbers which i kind of a little bit confused why the timbers need to have some competition in terms of goalkeeper because antonella is a decent goalkeeper i mean i know last season and in his previous season he has at times looked a little bit shaky but in the playoffs he was absolutely solid and even their backup goalkeeper steve clark he's also a very decent goalkeeper too i mean you know when he came in for antonella late in the season after antonella went down with an injury he looks pretty decent too so goalkeeper position is something that is kind of the least worrisome for the timbers but yet they still went and got a new goalkeeper uh but moving on uh scottish scottish international 
can't speak for a second there. But Scottish international Stephen Naismith is looking to come to MLS. Now, this is another one of those names that, that of course, are big names in Europe. Although, I wouldn't say Nate Smith was a big name. I mean, he was very good when he was with Everton and Rangers back in his prime. But he basically kind of fell, fell off a cliff after that. And, you know... It will be interesting to see who actually will pick him up. And like what I said about how these European kind of superstar players that come to MLS to kind of retire. I mean, Nate Smith is 31 year old, which is almost the same age as, as Nani. Or actually the same age as Nani too, because he's Nani is also 31 years old. And I think most likely maybe one of the smaller team or one of the teams that are kind of like near the bottom will eventually kind of sign him. I mean, maybe Orlando City might sign Stephen Nate Smith. Maybe even the San Jose Earthquakes might sign Stephen Nate Smith. Although, you know, as much as Stephen Nate Smith to the Quakes would be not a bad idea, I don't really think we really need another aging player. I mean, we already have an aging player in Wando. Um... We don't need another aging kind of player that is just fall off the cliff. But the other thing that that other MOS club might get him is that maybe they need a striker. And I think teams like RSL and Sporting KC might be in for him because they are two of those teams are desperately looking for a striker that is a proven goal scorer and can really kind of light it up, which... You know, Naismith, as I said, in his prime, he really did did that. But ever since he passed 30 years old, he kind of fell off a cliff. So we'll see how that's going to do. And we'll see which team will actually decide to pick him up. Um, and then finally, Mateus Almeida. And this is one of the rare times I actually include something about the Quakes in the news of the week. But Almeida uh, apparently said that he wants MLS team to go to Copa Libertadores. Now, um, I remember Liga MX's team a couple of years ago decided to bring some of their team to Copa Libertadores. And I know a couple of years ago, Tigres actually went all the way to the final of Copa Libertadores. They were playing against River Plate, which unfortunately they lost. But... The reason why there's been a lot of talk of how MLS and Liga MX's team going to Copa Libertadores is that they want to kind of they want to show the world that MLS and Liga MX's is really kind of want to be be a very competitive league and a well-known league in the world. And the other reason is CCL, you know, the CONCACAF Champions League hasn't really been a, a it's not a competition that is very well recognizable in terms of Continental Champions League. I mean, if you have to do the rankings of the comp Continental Champions League around the world, obviously the UEFA Champions League is going to be ranked number one, but Copa Libertadores is going to be a very close second. Now, the other thing that is good about this is that, you know, if MLS team go go into the Copa Libertadores and they actually do very well, then yeah, that would give MOS some recognition. But here's the problem of why why some fans do not want to see their MOS team, and even probably Don Garber will not agree on this idea, is mainly because, one, the geography problem is just, like, each team has to travel, like, many teams throughout the season, if they want to go into Copa Libertadores, each team will have to travel all the way down to South America, and sometimes they might have to travel as far as Argentina, and they have to do that in a midweek. And then they have to travel all the way back from, from Argentina to go back to the US to play an MOS League game, and you can see how problematic that could be, because from the US to to Argentina and let's say Atlanta to Buenos Aires is like a 10 hour flight. That's like equivalent to a European team decide to play a Champions League game, but that Champions League opponent is in LA. So 
yeah, you can see there's definitely that kind of problem. The distance is just way too far. And the other problem is that the Copa Libertadores is taking place throughout the season. And it's definitely longer than the CONCACAF Champions League. So there's going to be a lot of times where MLS team will have to go down to South America and come back in a midweek game. And with the schedule already being that congested, I don't think teams will even have like enough time to like teams will have to play almost every single go mid week and have to play every three days like most of the team in Europe or most of the team in England and they already are kind of having some problematic with that situation where they have to play every three days and they they only have to like travel short distance to play those midweek games. I mean, you know, Europe is kind of the, the the same size as the United States, so that wouldn't be a big of a problem if they have to play a midweek game in European competition. But if you have to travel all the way down to South America and it's a long journey and you have to do that at least five or six times, that is the big problem with this. So I, I don't think MLS team will ever go into Copa Libertadores mainly because of the geography, the timing and it's just is it is it really worth it like if MOS team goes go into the Copa Libertadores and they do not do well, yeah, that doesn't seem very that will kind of maybe not really give a good reputation in ter terms of the the league current status right now. So, yeah, we'll you know, I understand Almeida wants to create this idea because he's seen Liga MX's team done this before, but I, I just don't think it's a great idea, especially with what's going on with the season getting shorter and also the travel time is just ridiculous. But either way, that is pretty much it for the news of the week. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of these news. And again, like I said, this is going to be the last time where I'm going to be doing two news of the week per week until the off season begins again in november but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash that subscribe button and yeah i will see you guys next time